Uh, he's Gary Klein, USC football beat writer for the L.A. Times. And I'm sure we provided an interesting day for you yesterday, Gary. Can you sum up what happened yesterday? Well, Dan, you guys stirred it up quite a bit out here in Los Angeles uh, with the Tony uh, Dungy interview. Um, you know, I think uh, his comments, you know, coming from a guy with such high integrity, you know, uh, everyone took that as a logical thing that USC would do, actually. You know, reach out to someone with his experience, uh, if not for him directly, then to get some uh, some feedback from him. And uh, but I think that took obviously USC by surprise. Um, and when he made his uh, comments about being contacted, uh, not necessarily called, because you did ask him directly if he had been called. But yeah. uh, his indication that their people had contacted his people um, that kind of set things in motion for a, a day of drama around USC. And in, in the afternoon, they did. Uh, release a statement saying that uh, not only uh, had uh, Dungy been contacted by people not officially associated with USC, but also some calls had been made to the Denver Broncos. And obviously that was uh, in regard to uh, Jack Del Rio, their defensive coordinator who played at USC. But is this a hoax? Was Tony catfished here? Or were, or do you think there were like rogue USC boosters out there that were just sort of you know trying to see if somebody's interested in the job? Yeah, I think uh, it's the latter. I, I don't get the impression that this was, uh, you know, pranksters, uh, you know, some young guy <laughs> um, trying to trying to make a name, you know, by by pulling a hoax. I think these are people loosely, possibly affiliated with USC or have a you know a rooting interest for them uh, that might have uh, taken it upon themselves to uh, to try and inject themselves into the search. If and. You know the the thing about the Denver situation was that uh, they said in USC said in its statement specifically that they you know represented themselves as as affiliated with USC and they weren't so it's USC never a dull moment <laughs> and I guess we should anticipate these kinds of things especially in what's going to be a prolonged search is this a plum job still I think so uh, you know it's it, it's a better job now than it was when Lane Kiffin came into it in terms of the uh, sanctions that they're going to be coming off of. It's still USC. Uh, it's still one of the name brands in college football. Um, and so, yeah, I think it still is. Uh, we're talking to Gary Klein from the LA Times College Football Writer. The job search is on here for Pat Hayden in USC. If you were going to try to uh, clarify, summarize it. Well, it's it's begun, but I think it's just kind of in the infant stages. Uh, they they realize that they do have some time. Uh, they got a head start on everyone else with their decision to uh, to terminate uh, Lane Kiffin after five games. Um, and how much was that the strategy here of get ahead of everybody, including Texas, to be able to go after the best candidates? I don't know that it was an overriding concern. I think this was just a situation. Um, you know, that came to a head at Arizona State in Pat Hayden's mind that they were going to make a move, uh, especially, uh, you know, with a bye week uh, coming up. It, it's kind of allowed the USC fan base, players, everyone around that university to kind of exhale, uh, if you will, uh, and, and begin anew. So I think that's maybe one of the factors. I don't think that was the overriding factor in, in their decision to do it when they did it. What would you make of uh, David Pollack's uh, comments about Condoleezza Rice? Uh, I, I know that Pat Dye has weighed in where, you know, you should have players who played the game and eat and sleep and drink it if we're going to have this uh, committee to be able to pick who's going to play for a national championship. Well, I think, you, you know, you want people, obviously, that have a, 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 a great knowledge of the game, but let's be honest, almost everyone's going to have a vested interest so on some level, uh, you know, just depending on where they come from. And I think you just want people that are going to be able to look at it analytically, you know, very intelligently and make the best decisions. Um, obviously, David Pollack created quite a firestorm <laughs> with his comments. I don't think you should rule out anyone if they can be, uh, if they can, if they can be a good part of that committee, that's going to make an intelligent choice. What do you think of my uh, offer here, that we have Vegas do it? <laughs> because they don't have a vested interest in from, from a, a certain school. Their vested interest is they put their money behind their opinions here of the four best teams. And that's what we're trying to find, right? The four best teams in college football. And doesn't Vegas assess this better than anybody else without a hidden agenda? 
I, I, th- I think you're right about that. I can't imagine that we'd ever see the day when they do that. But uh, I think that would generate even more interest in this, uh, in this playoff. Well, I, I think it's difficult to find people. If, and I mentioned Pat Hayden, who I have great respect for. Pat doesn't have the time to be watching Baylor football or if he's going to watch a team in Flo- you know, Florida State. He, he, he has to worry about his own program. And that's where I think we put these guys in a tough position. Are we going to tell everybody who they voted for? Uh, you know, Pat Hayden's top four are Condoleezza Rice's top four. I mean, how how much public are we going to make this? I, I just think we put these people in a tough position where, you know, you can't. I don't think you can do the job because it's not your job. I, I think you're right. I mean, I don't. I can't imagine that we'd ever see a, a time where we're going to have full time members of this committee. That's their that's that's their career, but. You're right, and I, and I think it goes back to not only them not having necessarily the time to do it, but, again, everyone's coming with a, with a vested viewpoint yeah. from their background and, and whatever. So maybe you're right. <laughs> maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, the media will be descending on Vegas uh, each year for this, <laughs> uh, for this announcement. Okay, before I let you go, if you were handicapping right now with USC candidates, who would you put at the top of the list? Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I think, you know, the guy that's, that's, that's closest to the program, that has the best grip on this in terms of recruiting Los Angeles, knowing USC, uh, would be Steve Sarkeesian. I don't know that they're going to, you know, reach that, go that direction again with a former Carroll assistant. But I can tell you, as Washington was driving to possibly beat Notre Dame or possibly beat Stanford the other night, uh, Sarkeesian stock was soaring <laughs> among, <laughs> among USC fans. But, uh, you know, they've got a long time to look at it. Um, I'm sure they're going to touch base with all of the obvious candidates. What that, about Gruden? You know, he's out there. He's, that, that's a name that obviously is going to grab attention, uh, would get any recruit's attention. Um, but, you know, I just look at John Gruden and I say, that's a, that's a Super Bowl, you know, guy who's got a great job on television. Does he really want to get back into college coaching and recruiting and all that goes with being a college coach? Um, I had an NFL coach tell me one day, one time that once you've been in the NFL, if you don't have to go back to college, you don't go there because it's not the same money. It's not coaching 24 seven. There's so much more that goes with it. And if, if Gruden wanted a new, a different kind of challenge, boy, he <laughs> seemed like he'd be a slam dunk, but I don't know. That's that seems like a, a bit of a reach. I've been wrong before though. Well, Gary, we'll try to uh, give you a, uh... Maybe a quieter afternoon uh, today. <laughs> Thanks for giving us plenty to write about. All right. Gary Klein, L.A. Times college football writer. You know, all of a sudden, Fritzy's getting calls. Paulie's getting calls. I'm going, wait, what's going on here? They want to know about Tony Dungy. And all of a sudden, Tony um, reached out to Pat Hayden, the athletic director, and said, look, I apologize. You know, I, if... you know while I got you on the phone, though, Pat, you know. Or maybe it was Pat. It, Tony, while I got you on the phone here, you know, thought about this. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.